today I found myself completely switching my focus around. Um, You know, lately I've been feeling unhappy. Lately I've been feeling like, okay, I don't even know what's going on right now. And then I had to check in with myself and ask myself, where does your focus lie? Like, where is your focus? Because I know that what we focus on grows. And then immediately, God reminded me of the Bible verse. And I was like, whatever is good, whatever is true. And I'm like, hmm, what is that? I need to, I need to go back to that verse. And so just to give you some context. So just to give you some context. Um, today, I was uh, honestly, I wasn't having a bad day. But I just felt like, like, honestly, I felt like every time I put something in, like, I'm always doing good. I'm always coming with the purest intentions. Every time I, I put something in, it's like I never get anything back. It's like I always get, like, the complete opposite. Like, I always was, I always, I always, like, reap a wicked person's reward, if that makes sense and I just it was honestly because we were in I was in school or whatnot and like I was just coming with such good positive energy and like I just felt like people were just giving me dirty looks and like I just felt like oh I've never done anything to people I've been nothing but good to people I've been nothing but caring and kind and helpful and resourceful to you people and I get it if I was this super horrible person who has made so much mistakes which haven't we all, but I would get it if I was that way, but I, I've literally been nothing but good to you people, so I don't understand what all of this treatment is for. Why do I have to beg people who call themselves my friends to go do something with me? And I honestly felt desperate about it. Like, I felt like I'm being desperate right now. Like, there's no way I'm, you know, begging somebody to do this for me, and there's no way, like, you know what I mean? And it's just like, I've grown so much and I have done so much soul searching to the point where I'm just like, I didn't spend three years in isolation finding God to settle for people who can't even see not even a quarter of who I am, my real potential, my power, the light that I hold in me. Like, that's ridiculous if you think about it. It's ridiculous to continue to surround yourself and settle for less. Be patient. Now in school, it's obviously inevitable. Like if somebody's in your classes and stuff like that, and you start doing work with them, like you're gonna become friends with them. But don't, don't give too much of yourself because energy transfers are so real. And I'm not speaking, ooh, and I'm not speaking on new age things. I'm talking about transfer energy transfers and draining your energy. The spiritual God, God, like the Holy Spirit in you. You're draining your energy. You're constantly draining your energy every time you give yourself to somebody who doesn't deserve you. Every time you give yourself to somebody who has so much darkness in them that they can't receive God's light that is working through you. And so I felt so discouraged because I'm like, I'm begging people to help me make experiences in my life and memories. I'm begging people to hang out with me. Like, what does that tell me about them? Like, if I have to beg you to do something with me, but you call yourself my friend, what does that tell me about you? And sometimes people don't just, like, people are like, um, watch people's actions. It will tell you about how they feel about them. But sometimes people from their own mouths will tell you how they feel about you. It's just your choice whether you decide to ignore that sign or take it and, and keep your distance. Now, obviously, if somebody's in all your classes and stuff like that, it's going to be harder to, you know... um ignore them and distance yourself but there's certain things you can do that can cut off access to your light that can cut off access to your energy why aren't you talking as much why are you like being so dry where's all your energy well when i gave you that energy you didn't appreciate it so that's just my little rant but that's how i was how i've been feeling like i've been feeling like i have done nothing but good to people like god i deserve at least one good friend honestly i deserve a whole friend group of good friends but even if it's just one like where is my good friend why am i that good friend to everybody but nobody's a good friend to me this happened to me in my past and then god reminded me of the bible verse and i and i ran searching for it and it's from philippians 4 and it says um and i was reading and it's under the subtitle um reaching forward to god's goal and what i underlined was forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead 
And then it says, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let all of us who are mature think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this to you also. And honestly, I just love that verse because the Bible tells us to let go so many times. And we often, like from, from Philippians, we always go to, um, um, but through prayer and petition, make your request known to God. Like everybody goes to that, like, you know, that one verse, right? But we always skip past like the, the things we need the most. Forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. That isn't just talking about God's goal for our lives or God's promise for our lives. That's talking about everything that no longer serves us. It's literally saying, forget what is behind you forget what you have been delivered like don't forget what you've been delivered from remember that god delivered you from it but don't hold on to the resentment of the past don't hold on to you know the bitterness and the anger like forget what has already been behind you forget what god has put underneath his feet and reach forward to what is ahead continue to keep your eyes and your focus on god Where like often when I feel this way, I'm like, what am I focusing on? Am I trying to get these people to love me or am I or should I be focusing on a God that already loved me even when I didn't love him, even when I didn't show him how much he meant to me? Right. Like where is our focus? What are we focusing on? And then another verse that um, that was said was um, therefore. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this to you also. If we can't let go, if we think differently about this, if we have a hard time letting go, it literally says God will reveal this to you. We need to just be in prayer. We need to be in prayer over time. Like every time a problem occurs, I've been making it a habit to literally come to God before I tell anybody about it. It doesn't have to be a deep, long prayer, like just telling God what happened. Yes, he sees, but he wants to hear from you. And literally, I told God about a huge problem, something that would have been a huge problem. I went, I told him immediately, and my my mom came in about the problem, and it was resolved. Immediately, all he wants to do is hear from you. You would be surprised how quick he can work on your behalf. And so then also that, I also, sorry, I um underlined, um, it says, So for I have often told you and I say to you again with tears that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. So if Christ lives within you and the Bible says that many live as enemies um, of the of the cross of Christ, what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be a internal spiritual battle. There's going it's like we're constantly waging war against our flesh and our spirit. So if Christ lives within you, and many have become enemies of the cross of Christ, many people don't believe in God, what do you think? Do you think it's going to be easy for your light to shine through? No, but that's why we need to switch our focus. We can't focus on the enemies. We can't focus on people who don't have God's love in them. We need to shift our eyes on God, and everything else will manifest. God will. Sh- will f- God has such strategic and amazing ways that he shows our light to people. And if and if it's in God's will, that person will change. But we can't change people. And that's going to be my next episode, like for real. Um, and then after that, it says their, their end is destruction. So everything they do, everything that their hands touch leads to destruction. Pay attention to that. Their God, is, lowercase g, their God, little g, is their stomach. And their glory is their shame. If that's not our generation, I don't know what is. Their God is their stomach. Their God is their cravings. Their God is anything that comes to their minds that they desire in that moment. That's who they idolize. That's what they idolize. If instant gratification from social media comes to their mind, that's what they idolize. If they want to stuff their face in all the junk food and ruin their gut health, that's what they idolize. If they feel like sexually stimulated and want to have sex with multiple people, that's what they idolize. That's what they go and do. Their God, the person they worship, the thing they worship is their desires, their flesh. And then it says their glory is their shame. Like, are we not seeing that today? Our whole generation literally thinks, like they literally make glory out of the most shameful things ever. The most shameful things ever. They try to glorify it. Pay attention to these things. Are the, like, do these characteristics fit the people you're around? And if so, you need to start putting boundaries in place if you can't get away from them right away for whatever reason 
um and so then also just to like kind of end it off because i don't want this to be too long but i just wanted to say it says rejoice in the lord always i will say it again rejoice let your heart let let um sorry let your graciousness be known to everyone for the lord is near so don't worry about anything and then we know that verse through prayer petition and thanksgiving make your request known to god um and then i also wanted to highlight finally brothers and sisters whatever is true the truth whatever is honorable whatever gives glory to god whatever is just whatever is fair whatever is fair whatever is pure whatever has the light of god in it whatever brings glory to god whatever makes god happy whatever god asks for whatever is lovely we know the characteristics of love love is patient love is kind love isn't boastful love isn't self-seeking love isn't rude it isn't irritable and then whatever is commendable if there's any moral excellence if there's anything praiseworthy dwell on these things switch your focus